Control of the planetary gear set comes from the operation of driving devices, clutches, and the reaction devices, brakes. An example of the driving devices involves the two clutches in front of a Simpson gear train transmission, front clutch and rear clutch. The front clutch engages in all forward gear, but the rear clutch engages in third gear and reverse. In ZF Ecolife transmission, the driving devices involves the two clutches installed in clutch unit, clutch A and clutch B. Clutch A engages in reduction drive first, second and third gear and in direct drive, fourth gear, but clutch B engages in direct drive, fourth gear, and overdrive, fifth and sixth gear. The driving devices connect the turbine shaft from the torque converter to a member of the planetary gear train. The turbine shaft is normally built as part of or spline to one or more of the driving devices. Driving devices are usually multiple plate disc clutches. In most cases, driving devices will be at the front of the transmission, just behind the pump. The parts of a multi-disc clutch assembly are drum, hub, multi-disc package, apply piston, and piston return springs. The drum, also called clutch housing, has splines inside its outer edge for the externally lugged plates, usually the unlined plates, steel plates. The inner diameter of the drum is machined for the apply piston, and its inner and outer seals. A relief ball valve is housed in the drum body, to allow hydraulic fluid to escape when the clutch is released. The cylinder bore acts as a guide for piston travel. The drum holds all other clutch components. The drum has splines or holes outside its outer edge for turbine or input speed sensor. The piston is operated hydraulically, it moves in a short cylinder in a clutch drum. Loosen piston by means of light blows with a plastic hammer on the drum. The drum cylinder bore acts as a guide for piston travel. A centrifugal relief valve in the clutch piston or clutch drum, releases fluid trapped in the cylinder when the clutch is released. 
The piston is made of cast aluminum or steel, with the seal ring grooves around the outer and inner diameter. Oil seal ring seat in the groove. This rubber seal retains fluid pressure required to stroke the piston and engage the clutch pack. A typical clutch piston area is determined by subtracting the area of the inner diameter from the area of the outer circle diameter. Some clutch pistons use a middle seal so the piston will have two working areas. The piston return springs overcome the residual fluid pressure in the cylinder and move the piston to the disengaged position, when clutch action, transfer, is no longer needed. The piston release can be affected by one large coil spring, or by cup spring, or by a pack containing many small springs. The splines on the outside of the central hub mate with the splines on the inner plates, usually friction plates. The splines on the inside of the central hub connected to one or more members of the gear set through a shaft. The central hub of clutch, B, splines to the planet carrier 2 which connects with ring gear 3. The central hub of clutch, A, bolted to the drum of clutch, B, which connected to the turbine shaft. Two sets of plates make up the clutch pack, the driving plates and driven plates. The outer driving plates, usually steel plates, are flat external splines locate in the mating splines in the clutch drum. They provide a smooth surface for the friction discs to engage with. The inner driven plates are steel plates which have friction material bonded to them, their splines mate with splines on the outside of the central hub. The friction material in wet type clutch is made in three types, rubber based, cork based, paper based. Friction plates often have a groove pattern to help wipe fluid away, dissipate heat, eliminate clutch noise, and change friction qualities during apply and release. A smooth plate is the coolest and slowest to apply. The waffle plate will apply the fastest, but it will have less heat removed by the oil. The plates are loaded into the clutch drum on the piston and are placed alternately to make up the pack. The pressure plate is often held in place by a snap ring. 
the pressure plate may has two or three measurements to adjust clutch pack clearance. The size and number of plates in a clutch pack depends on the maximum torque it is required to transmit. Three to five plates of each type are commonly used. The plates are pressed together for engagement by a hydraulically operated piston. In released position, hydraulic pressure is not acting on the clutch apply piston. With no oil pressure, clutch release springs separate clutch discs. Clutch hub turns but cannot drive output shaft drum assembly. Oil pressure is now acting against clutch apply piston, piston overcomes spring pressure and squeezes clutch discs and plates tightly together. In that some discs are attached to drum output shaft assembly and others to hub. In an alternating arrangement, squeezing action locks hub and drum together. Hub now turns output shaft. Use a straight edge to check that the outer and inner clutch discs are flat and not distorted. Carry out visual inspection. Check the discs against the end disc or a flat surface. Replace any discs that are dished or corrugated, and replace lined discs with damaged or blackened linings. Steel discs with heat discoloration and or heat spots must be replaced, and clutch discs with damaged or indented tooth surfaces must be replaced. In the released position, the plates must retain a set clearance. This clearance allows them to separate from one another to allow oil to flow between the plates and avoid excessive or premature wear. Clutch pack clearance must be checked when rebuilding an automatic transmission. Most transmissions give a range for clutch pack clearance. The pressure plate is often held in place by a waved snap ring. This snap ring is used to adjust clutch pack clearance. A feeler gauge is placed between the pressure disc and the last outer clutch disc. Carry out multiple measurements at the circumference, and measurements are compared to specifications. There are several ways to adjust clutch stack clearance by using different steel discs, or pressure discs, or snap rings or pistons of varying thickness. An air pressure test can be used to verify operation of clutch packs. They make an audible thud when engaged and should release smoothly when air pressure is released. Set pressure of compressed air reservoir to 3 bar, and close stop cock. Pressure drops are not permissible. Repeat pressure test at piston B, just as done for piston A. If the pressure loss in the piston becomes too big, then the corresponding piston must be removed again and the cause for leakage must be remedied.